Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to Digitally Uploaded Podcast, the companion podcast to digitallydownloaded.net. My name is Alan, I'm going to be hosting this week, because it's E3 week, um, with me. Yeah. I have Matt, hello Matt. Yeah, hello. Um, I also have other Matt, hello other Matt. Yeah, other hello. Other hello. <laughs> and we have Harvard, hello Harvard. Hello, good morning. And we have Trent as well, hi. Hello. <laughs> that was a very enthusiastic high to trend there, Alan. <laughs> no, like it... it's like a, and we have Trent, and you know, like what do I respond to that with? No, no, because everyone else was in such a like negative Debbie Downer mood, you know, like so everyone... you had to be. Yeah, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm reading the room, Trent. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm for once excited and you know full okay. of positive energy, and uh, you just you just you know just ruined it for me for the rest of the podcast. Okay, Trent is also here. Hi, Trent. Hello, there I'm also go. here. Yay! Yeah. All right, well, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, you can see three week. We're going to talk about E three stuff. By the time that you're hearing this, it's probably already gone. So we're doing predictions and stuff. If we talk about something that doesn't exist, I'm going to cry. I will cry. You can hear us be wrong about the future. That's going to be fun. It's just like me being regularly wrong, but now it's about <laughs> the future. Anyway, we're going to head to some music really, really quickly, and then we'll get straight into it.
and welcome back. Let's go. All right, E3. Let's have energy for the E's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, Alan. <laughs> Look. Well done. <laughs> Introduction of the future. <laughs> Look, you know, Sony's not even showing up. I don't have to show up either. Frick it. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the shortest E3 show of all time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go to music now. <laughs> um, no but e3 is actually happening that's pretty exciting um there's a lot of stuff that we want to see i think we should do this we should have also had this discussion beforehand but i think we should do this um sort of uh lead publisher by publisher so i reckon we just start off with nintendo is that is that a reasonable thing to do i'm cool with starting yeah. with nintendo let's talk about let's nintendo. go with let's talk about nintendo's Matt, tell us about Nintendo. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to keep talking. Can you, can you learn how to use a cadence, please, Matt? <laughs> you can learn how to talk about Nintendo. And that's, like, genuinely, that's implied that something's coming after that. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for Matt to jump in. Oh. Yeah. Okay. See, yeah, Matt, right. this other split personality, like, it's, he isn't actually a second person. He is actually Matt's second split personality. <laughs> so it, well, he's just trying to get that other side of his brain to work, and it's just not working. It's the polite Canadian, man. <laughs> not Canadian, New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Basically, Australia's Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyway, Matt, tell, tell me... What you're looking forward to from Nintendo? Um, <laughs> I, 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 I see predators out of here. Yeah. Um, I have no idea what to expect from Nintendo. I've not been paying attention to anything that they're doing. Okay. Well, I like so. Nintendo. Pick me. I'll say something Nintendo. -y. Can, can say something Nintendo. -y. <laughs> all righty. Save the ship. So, all right. It's. Animal Crossing's the year this year. If it's not it out this year, everyone's going to cry. It should have been out last year. So screw Nintendo. Um, so that's where that one is up to. Otherwise, you're going to get, you know, your usual games like your Link's Awakening. It's already announced. So that's going to be at E3. You're going to get a few other announced games which are already at E3. But nothing as cool as Link's Awakening. See, I don't actually really like the art style of Link's Awakening. So, we have this conversation like every time and Alan and I actually agree on this one. It's like the one thing we yeah. agree on. It just looks like Secret of Mana. It looks terrible. It looks like no, it looks like, like the, the remake. remake. Yeah, 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 the remake yeah. of Secret the of Mana. Secret of Mana. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the the terrible one. Um it looks exactly like that and it's just like nah. Yeah, yeah. What I am looking forward to is that rhythm game. I'm sure we're going to see that at mm. E3, which is but, cool. The Zelda one, the one that oh, the yeah. the oh, to the Yeah, yeah, the Necro Zelda. Yeah, it's meant to come Zelda. out this month, so it's probably going to get a definite release date, even a surprise drop. Yeah, oh, it would drop. be so cool. That'd I would be, be cool. I'd watch it for the surprise drop. Yeah. I love that Nintendo gave them the license to do that because I know the that's amazing. The second answer is like very, very good. It's, it's. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, it's Nintendo giving this this tiny little indie developer their one of their most valuable properties. It's pretty impressive yeah. that they're willing to do that. Yeah. Um, I'm not doing that. They did that with. Basically, golf story, right? Like they they helped out this little indie guy from Perth and helped them make effectively Mario Golf. Yeah, but this is actually Zelda in there. There's a lot of risk to for Nintendo to actually give a company a license that valuable. If they completely screw it up, it can actually hurt the brand. Well, like, this is the first Zelda game after Breath of the Wild. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a big deal, and I, I'm really impressed that Nintendo, yeah. Nintendo's doing that, and I'm looking forward to seeing that at E3. I'm also really keen on Fire Emblem because I'm a Fire Emblem fanboy, and I like the fact that Fire Emblem these days is so weeb. It's not funny. It's incredibly yeah, weeb. They're pushing out a lot of them lately. Hey, yeah, I'm track of how many are coming out. Yeah, it's it's pretty heavy. Like Nintendo's gone all in with the anime stuff, and Fire Emblem's it's it's path into anime dom. So good on them. Yeah, and it's I'm, all like we're gonna release three games at once. Da, 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 da. Because people like me are going to buy all three. Yeah. <laughs> well, on that topic, actually, Pokemon. I'm the most excited for this Pokemon game that I have ever been for a Pokemon. Oh, you game just since. want the Rolling Sheep? No, Alan is right. I, I want the Rolling Sheep so badly. Everyone wants the Rolling Sheep. It's Wooloo. Yes. <laughs> also, the fact that his name sounds like Wooloo, like Wolo, Wolo. <laughs> yeah, Wooloo. <laughs> He's absolutely going to be called Priest. <laughs> he needs to I, be. I, 
I'm just interested to see how that actually is. That the the name of the sheep in Voodoo. Japan, uh, Japan as well, because Japan has tr the Japanese have trouble with those specific Voodoo. combinations of letters, <laughs> yeah. and it's going to be funny Some, to hear them try yeah, to pronounce somehow it. Somehow, Voodoo sounds like an even better name for it. Because um, I mean, my my wife being Japanese, she has there, there's a suburb in Sydney called Wollamaloo, and um, oh no, she has great trouble getting her, her tongue around that because it's um they're just a whole bunch of either. <laughs> yeah, that's true. A whole bunch of a whole bunch of uh, sounds that aren't really in the Japanese language. So that sheep is going to be an amusing one. Um, yeah, it's, that's the the Japanese it's name the, for it as well. The Japanese name for it is Udu. Ah, there you go. That makes but more sense. Basically the same, but without the <laughs> yeah. W. Yeah, 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 that makes a lot more sense. Um, but yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's a bit we found out about E3 before we started to record this. For people who are listening in, we're actually recording on a Saturday, so it's a couple of days before E3 starts. Um, and yeah, that's one of the big announcements we've had so far. I'm I'm keen on it. I'm yeah. always keen on more Pokemon. Pokemon is good. Well, I haven't played Pokemon since Emerald. So like, it's been, I want to say, over like 14 years. But you missed out on the best Pokemon game. Incorrect. Black and Emerald White. is the only one that matters. I do like that you liked Gen 3, though, because I like started playing that at one stage, like as a revisit. I'm like, this is actually good. Why are people bitching about? It? I think it's because of like the the water at the end of the game. Like people the water know. doesn't matter. Everyone's wrong. I love Gen 3. Gen 3 is the best. Game. Trumpets all the way. You know the best part of Gen 3? I like the volcano area where you run in the volcano and you get the little soot on your feet and then you collect it. Yeah, That's the best and there's part of the whole game. <laughs> yeah. You can find Torko there, and I like Torko. I still think oh, yeah, Gen, Gen 1's the best Gen. Gen 1 is pretty good. I'm yeah. old school. I'm too, Gen 1 doesn't real have old Toad. Toad. Yeah, but it has Farfetch'd, and I mean, Farfetch is the only thing you actually need. It also has one. Mr. Mime. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> and Mr. Magma. Mime. And Magma. Magma is pretty cool. And you also have, like, the calm oh, Pokemon. The what? The what? The cum Pokemon. <laughs> Muck. Yeah, Muck. Oh, I thought you meant Ditto. This is a family-friendly game for a family-friendly podcast, Alan. No. Oh, Alan okay, so Ekans is snake backwards, so Muck is cum backwards. <laughs> <laughs> See, in the later games, you get trash, so you can put cum in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> they go broke, Harvard. Someone call Harvard, he's crying. <laughs> Just because I'm the only one with his number. Oh, Sorry, I don't usually laugh at jokes like that, but it's so logical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, Sorry, I can maintain the topic. Does this, does this Pokemon have all the old Pokemon back? What? Can Actually, I get, yeah, I don't know. Can I get my Farfetch'd into, into, can I get far into Pokemon? There might Award? not be a national debt, but I think uh. you might be able to. I see more. more. Is in the main games. Surely yeah. It's going to be like, let's go at least, right? There's some way. Like oh, actually, yeah. you're probably right. Well, because they got that. them through the, yeah, well, the cloud Pokemon service. It connects with a bank, so not the bank, the home. So the home, bank. Home, home connects all your current generation stuff. And then once you've got home connected to all your current generation stuff, bank then links into home so you can get all your older generation stuff. And then you can obviously trade up from the original game into bank and then trade up from bank Wait, into home. So... Let me get this right. Because the virtual console version of Pokemon Blue is connects to the bank, I can upload my Pokemon to the bank and then from there transfer them to the home and from there transfer them into Sword. Yes. yes. Okay, so I can have my party of six far-fetched and that's really all I care about. Yes. So on that topic... I don't know why you'd want that, but sure. Yeah. Because far-fetched is, <laughs> far is best duck. Matt just wants to make it big. Like he wants to use that new big thing. Yeah, I was going to say he wants to make his duck big. <laughs> <laughs> my duck beak that, with a big leak that yeah, sounds like a euphemism but it's actually not <laughs> it just has a really stupid name and I just completely forgot it as soon as it was announced I'm like oh okay it just makes the Pokemon big big Fun. button big button yeah that's a pretty cool feature big sheep big duck oh see the thing is that horny twitter is going to get a field day out of this <laughs> <laughs> it's just a lot of cum <laughs> So, 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 does it, does it become bigger, or does there suddenly become more of it? I think it just like expands. It's, it's like you know, you know, when you add more flour to dough and it like rises, and then you add some yeast. It's like that. So, so the volume, it's a big cum changes, but the density goes down. What? <laughs> yeah, it's viscosity. 
<laughs> so I don't want to interject and say how the actual feature actually works because then it'll just make what Alan is saying ten times worse and yeah. you'll be like, nah. <laughs> well, like, okay, so that feature, I think it looks fine. I don't really care personally, but I'm also just going to do it for, like, those three turns that you have it and then I'm never going to use it again. Are we going to see... Do you reckon we're going to see Pokemon at E3? Yeah, yeah it's there. Definitely. Yeah, like, they're no actually going to be there playable? Or yeah, it's playable. Yeah, they said that. They will. Oh, okay. They've confirmed it. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's pretty neat. So Nintendo's booth is going to be good because E3 is now open to the publics and stuff. So people oh. can go along and play it, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Also, That's... do you know what's going to get ignored and slept on to, to my sadness? Luigi's Mansion 3. That's it, Luigi's Mansion 3. It is playable, what? though. <laughs> it's starring Muck. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so Luigi Mansion Mansion is really, Luigi, really, actually really happening? Yeah, I think so. It seems announced. Yeah, it was announced by Next Level Games, wasn't it? Yeah, like last really? year, wasn't it? Oh, that's pretty cool. It's yeah. an old game. It's like it's everyone like when, when it was announced, it. everyone wanted Animal Crossing. Everyone was like, this was gonna be the Animal Crossing direct. And then it was like, Luigi's Mansion Free. And I was like, nah. We don't want yeah. that. No nobody's excited for it, but I am. It's, it's going to be good. It's pretty. Yeah. I mean, the first two were pretty reliable. Yeah, they were. They were fun. I haven't it's played really like either of those the games. Closest that video games have ever gotten to proper comedy horror. Like that's that's a good thing. Because it's it's Eddie Murphy's yeah the haunted, it's just house. The haunted mansion with Luigi <laughs> yeah. in it. Like, why would you not like? Why would you not love that? Um, Nintendo should make a Ghostbusters game. They have. Uh, yeah. And it's great. It's a good game. And it's getting remastered. It is. I'm very excited. Oh, that's oh. the one that's getting remastered, is it? Yeah. Cool. It's a good one. Wait, okay. I thought it was like the latest 3G AAA bullcrap. Yeah, one. I thought so that's you were why talking I paid zero interest the in FPS. It. No, this is, no, this is the weird fishing game. <laughs> and it's I've, fantastic. What? So, so the, all this time I've ignored the news because I'm like, oh, this is crap. This is that weird AAA fishing, uh, uh, fishing AAA game. I don't need to pay any attention to it. It was only out out like, like last year. Well, not last year. I feel old now. But like, and now it's like, it turns out it's the good game. No, nah, mind blown. Yeah, it's good. I'm excited. Nah. I'll buy that. Nah. It's a good Switch game, actually. I'll probably buy it on Switch if it comes out on Switch. It's on um, Switch. Everything's better on Switch. Um, uh, what about heroin? Heroin right. better on Switch. I mean, her- I mean, the Switch has got a nice, a nice screen for that. Yeah, shoot up, Buttercup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, All right. Well, <laughs> this is no longer family friendly. <laughs> the kid friendly E three podcast. <laughs> I, th- I think that ship sailed ever since that mock Joe Pelham. <laughs> <laughs> Just beat everything out. This so, entire I mean, section is one big sensor. <laughs> Does does Nintendo not have anything else in no. the pipeline? Does anybody know? Oh, it's got those um the the, the Mecha one too. They'll probably show that, right? And Damon oh, X Machina and, uh, and uh, yeah. what's that other one that um is being made? Um, it's not Bayo yeah. Three, but it's the, the, the other, other um, one. Oh, game one. um, the Platinum Games. One, Astral yeah. Chain. Yeah. Oh, to yeah. the oh actually, the one we haven't talked about, which is definitely going to be there, or, or not definitely. I, <laughs> I think I, I, th- I thought I heard that it was going to be there, but maybe not. But I'm hoping it will be the uh, Team Ninja um, Marvel game. Um, oh no, they talked about it. Yeah, three. I didn't know what it was because I didn't click on the thing that said Marvel. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that, that's that's coming. Oh, Ultimate Alliance Three. Uh, no, yeah, that'll be there. I thought oh, yeah, that's yeah. a confirmed list of games yeah. that will play, be playable. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's going to be good. I hope. I think those I mean, Ultimate te- Alliance games are really fun. It's it, Team Ninja is pretty. Pretty good. Is that like Marvel versus Capcom? No, no, no. no it's, it's like a it's a RPG kind of. It's a Diablo beat 'em up, basically. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it's fun. The but old game is pretty good. It's a completely different developer now. It's Koei rather than. Who so we'll RPG? turn into the Black Mirror episode. <laughs> I bet it's just Marvel Marvel Warriors. <laughs> yeah, Marvel Warriors basically, which is which is fine by me. <laughs> That's I'm all for that. That'd be good. I'm looking forward to that game quite a lot, actually. That's fun. Yeah, that should be good. All right, so do we just want to do everyone say what we're looking forward to the most from Nintendo? Yeah, just one game. Pick a game, any game. Go, Trent. I want Animal Crossing. I want it now. Okay, go, Matt. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say Astral Chain. Yeah, That's That's a good point. About. Mm. I forgot about that. Why are you looking forward to that one, Matt? Don't know. It looks cool. It looks, looks like, it looks like a platinum game. Yeah. <laughs> Why it would looks you like not? A platinum games game. Okay, that's good yeah. enough. Good enough reason. Harvard. I'm thinking of Luigi's Mansion. Yep. Alan. Uh, probably Pokemon, which is weird for me. 
Cool. And for me, definitely Fire Emblem. All right. Awesome. We'll go to some music next. Yeah, we all like different things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Both of everything's good. Welcome back from all that. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about Ubisoft and CD Projekt Red a little bit here. Um, might as well chuck an EA as well, because why not? Uh, oh, we've lost Alan a bit. Okay, I'll take over while Alan fixes his technical issues. Alan, get it fixed. Um, okay, so yes, we're going to talk about... Wait, the, did I... Yeah, back. Hello. Okay, we might as well start the section again. Why Alan, is it doing that? I don't know. It just cuts out every so often. It's so annoying. Okay, three, Go again. two, one... And welcome back from all of that. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about EA, uh, Ubisoft, and CD Projekt Red, uh, with mic problems notwithstanding. Shall we? Shall we begin? Yeah, why not? Yes. Um, the well, pirate game. Pirate game. Yeah, that's the pirate one, game. That's the one, dude, bro thing. I'm kind of looking forward to. Um, pirate, what pirate game? The Ubisoft one. Remember, I think it was two years ago they announced it. The one yeah. that the Singapore team is making. Um, skulls and skulls and bones. Bones is that what they actually skull and call? bones? Yeah, it's yeah, skull and bones. Skull and bones. Oh, so that one. That's the pirate multiplayer game, which doesn't wouldn't usually interest me, but if it gets the physics right, like in the Assassin's Creed games with the ship combat, and um, turns it into an interesting multiplayer experience, I'll give it a go. I, I mean, like Ubisoft, Ubisoft does do the online seen quite well <laughs> um, with the support it's managed to get for For Honor and Tom Clancy's and all that kind of stuff. So if it can yeah. do that to a, a game that I'm actually interested in, which is, you know, pirate ships and stuff, um, I'll give it a go. It needs to have a good like amount of sea, like proper sea shanties though. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> like you need you to have like a bunch. Like, no, legit, if you sing as a team into your mic a sea shanty, it should like buff your team or something. That would be amazing. Yeah, but it will make me want to die. <laughs> no sea shanties. Why do you? Why do you sea sea shanties were the best thing in Assassin's Creed. Collecting them up was good fun. No, that was yeah. the worst game. That was that should be stricken from Assassin's Creed history. I don't First understand your taste in games, Trent. <laughs> yeah, you're a little bit of an odd duck, Trent. You're not perfect <laughs> as such. Um, but yeah, what about you, Matt? Um, is there anything from the Dude Bro companies that you're kind of interested in? Um, the new that new Star Wars game that EA has been mm. talking a little bit about. Oh yeah, like Fallen Legion, be good. Fallen Empire, whatever. Fallen, oh, the, the, the Fallen, Fallen something. The, the, the generic, one. forgettable, forgettable name. Yeah, the single player one. Mm. Yeah, With no microtransactions and yeah. If, oh, that, really if they do that right, that could be really good. Oh, it's no, been it's been like Star Wars and Uncharted though. Star Charted. Well, it's made by Respawn, so it's going to be a bit Titanfall 2 which I'm into, because Ooh, Titanfall 2 is one of the best games good. ever made. <laughs> I mean, That's Respawn's nice okay, and mix. it would have worked, but I still would have rather Bioware make it. And You want current Bioware to yeah. Not I current I Bioware. Know, yeah, that not game current will be cancelled in, like, a year's time anyway, and not actually come out, and some multiplayer version will come out anyway. Yeah, so. that's true. 
Yeah. Um, just the anthem, like, bashing train for the moment. <laughs> um, did you see they've abandoned the roadmap entirely? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, because oh, they spent all their time trying to fix the game and then they released like the Cataclysm content or something and it was just the regular overworld gameplay, but now you could choose what you're gonna shoot. <laughs> there was no there was nothing else added to it. It was literally just that. And I don't, I don't know how anybody knows this because nobody's playing it anymore. <laughs> I keep seeing Anthem for like thirty dollars. Which yeah. is the sign and like not even Fallout seventy six went that low. Yeah, it's not worth it. I feel it's really it's bad. About 40 bucks too much. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, this game is not going to be around in six it's months. It's too many. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pay me to do it. Yeah. But like, Unfortunately. I, I keep seeing them saying that they're going to support Anthem. I don't understand why. Just just nuke it into the sun. Screw it. No one wants it anymore. <laughs> it should be like Destiny 2. They should do what they did, turn it to a free-to-play game, and if they're going to do any more expansions, make that the paid version like well, the thing is is that destiny 2 is good to begin with and the shooting felt good Des uh, like anthem is like playing with a sock you know as a gun and you just like <laughs> slap it on people's faces yeah i don't i don't see any way to save anthem i don't think even going free to play would do it so uh, anthem, like, why would you go on so but anthem, <laughs> anthem will not be at e3 alan so it we can move on from, from that i mean do you think we'll see dragon age that's the question no absolutely not no, they're all still working on anthem <laughs> they can't oh. do anything else right now it's so sad <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's really sad um actually no Baldur's gate 3 though Oh yes, I mean that's, that's kind of not dude, that's kind of not dude bro. But let's let's talk about it. Um, that was announced ahead of <laughs> this podcast being record recorded. Obviously, we're not geniuses that manage to predict. No, I, Matt, you've ruined the illusion. But um, yeah, I, I saw that announcement what yesterday or whatever, and I kind of hit the roof because that game is. I mean, Bald Baldur's Gate is an absolute masterpiece. You're probably too young for it, Alan. No, I played, played it. it. Oh, okay, I played it on my bad. Okay, good, excellent. Um, but yeah, it's a it's an absolute masterpiece. I never thought we'd see a Baldur's Gate three. I really didn't because the the licensing is all shot to hell and different developers. It is a bit nightmare. The original <laughs> publisher isn't there anymore, and all that kind of stuff. And then there's a, another publisher that doesn't have the resources to do Baldur's Gate three, but it has the license to Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate two, and all that kind of. It's just a it's a clusterfuck basically. But um, uh, but, don't but, swear in this podcast, man. Thank you. This is a child friendly oh, podcast. Shit. Shut up. It's Mr. already Mark. ruined. Um, <laughs> Mr. Muck. Um, Mr. Muck. <laughs> oh, you reckon that Mr. Muck is Mr. Mum's come? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go there again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was really happy to see Baldur's Gate 3 announced. And on top of that, the one studio that I think could do it justice is the one that's ended up with it. So uh, Larian Studios is the developer behind um, Divinity. Divinity. So they definitely know their old school RPGs and they have a real respect for that stuff. And unlike the guys that did, um, unlike Obsidian, which also would have been able to do it because they have, what's the one? Pillars of Eternity? Yeah. Um, so they would have been able to do Baldur's Gate 3, but unfortunately they're owned by Microsoft. Um, so it would have been a pretty exclusive game. Whereas with Larry and Studios, it can go multi-platform and wherever, um, mm. which is good. I'm very happy for this. This is, this makes me happy. This is my happy dance. You're not dancing. I do like the... the oh, I am. You just can't getting it. a good resurgence at the moment. Yeah. They were, they were gone for a while. It's the fault of the people who keep playing D&D. Like, D&D <laughs> keeps coming back. And they won't let us forget it. No, I, I hate D&D. I just want to be honest. Like, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it's, that's that's the resurgence, I think. And also the fact that they keep releasing like Fallout 1, 2, um, Baldur's Gate 1, 2, that... Uh, what's the other... Uh, Arcanum? Is it Arcanum? No, the Dungeon of Dragons ones are Baldur's Gate, Ice. No, I know, but like those like sorts uh, planes, of games. Planescape. Oh, Planescape Tournament, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Planescape is, uh, is kind of... <clears throat> The classic um that's the one that has the highest regard of all which mm. is which is hard to talk really for yeah it, it is actually a very hard game to even come close to <laughs> it's uh it's an interesting one that one because it's an rpg but it's not combat based at all in fact combat's kind of really a minor almost an afterthought in that one it's more a narrative driven kind of story rpg and uh it, it's, it's an absolute classic you'll be able to play it on switch soon because it's getting dumped there along with oh, everything nice. else see i'll probably play it on switch because that makes sense to me 
Yeah, so that was the other, I guess, the, the other Dungeons & Dragons announcement that happened pre-E3. Um, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, Icewind Dale and Neverwinter Nights and Ooh. Planescape. They're all coming to Switch. Oh, and consoles, also on PS4 as well. But wow. Yeah, Never, Neverwinter um, Nights, the original one, not the uh, MMO. The, the original is coming. Yeah, that's, that game rocks. Complete with all the DLC and the multiplayer and all the good stuff. So... Yeah, there's a lot of Dungeons and Dragons coming, which is great. Makes me very happy. Very dude, bro. Because <laughs> I do love, I do love my Dungeons and Dragons, and yeah, I'm much more keen for that than whatever CD Projekt Red is doing with <laughs> Cyber. I don't think we need to talk about that game because I know that your response is going to be the same response that you usually have. Yeah, can I just like make one slight thing? I'm still hopeful because everyone's forgetting The Witcher Three was really good. Like it was, yeah. it was, it was really good. And Since yeah, I think everything I've seen about Cyberpunk has mainly been a bit apprehensive. Oh, speaking about the Witcher Three, though, like... apparently there's the rumor it's coming to Switch. No, Trent. No, of course did not. Did you did you not read? You read Stealth's tweet and you just <laughs> you, you assumed <laughs> it was no true. Way. Um, no, so running on Switch, no which would be like no, the no. no. So what happened was Digital Foundry um, was um, I think they were investigating the possibility of whether the Switch could run The Witcher 3 or something. Anyway, that got misinterpreted by certain people who shall, well, I've already named them, but shall remain nameless hereafter. <laughs> and uh, they, they interpreted that to mean Digital digital Foundry is leaking The Witcher 3 Switch. It's not going to happen. There's no way the Switch can run The Witcher 3. It cannot it do downgraded? it. downgraded? No, it cannot do it. <laughs> it cannot do it. There's no way it can fit that kind of size open it's world. It's too big. <laughs> with, yeah, it just can't happen. It won't. There's no way. Zero chance. Putting putting my foot down. Saying that. Down. But yep. the other leaker was true. The Pokemon leak that turns out to be real. Yeah, but Digital Foundry didn't leak that. You, you you can't you can't be like one person leaked one thing. Therefore, all their leaks are correct. <laughs> all the leaks are correct. <laughs> no, so I leaked the Pokemon was coming out in the Switch. So my next leak is that uh, Smash Bros is gonna be its own character in Smash Bros. Yeah, what about uh, what Bros. about the rumor that uh, Microsoft is going to give Nintendo uh, Banjo Kazooie, and that's why Nintendo is going to be at the E3 um, Microsoft conference? Mm. You know, it's actually Good. not <laughs> that far fetched. It's well, not I mean, much of a duck Pokemon. You're correct. It's actually a bear. <laughs> that would probably that would probably be the one good thing to come out of Microsoft this year. I think pretty sure Microsoft's stage show will otherwise just be to show off its uh, hygiene products. No, because Microsoft's got 14 <laughs> games, uh, un 14 guys, unannounced IP, which is no, the first party. The guy's, guy's going to get up on stage, and the first thing he's going to do is hold up a can of that deodorant sp spray and say, this is the future of gaming. And then everyone in the crowd's going to go ballistic, because that's what they do. Yeah, and yeah. See, You're saying this like this is a bad thing when you're talking to a group of people who like, don't know how to clean themselves. Oh, I'm sure they need this. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not for a second saying that they don't need the Microsoft hygiene products, but... I don't, like know. I don't know if that's uh, to me. Uh, I think Microsoft should perhaps focus more on making games. That, no, that no, they, 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 they are. They've got 14, 14 IP, 14 new first 14 party, 14 new IP, well, not new IP, but 14, 14 unannounced, IP. 14 unannounced games for everyone in their first party IP range, ready yeah. to go. Uh, so yeah. that'll be what one one Obsidian game, one game from Ninja Theory, uh, Ninja Forza. Theory. Forza, <laughs> gonna Halo. The, the chances of um, any of that being any good is like zero. <laughs> I mean, did you see the leaked trailer for the Ninja Theory game? It looks terrible. Well, on that yeah. note, we're going to go to some music. <laughs> <laughs> what a happy and upbeat thing to go to music on. But yes, it looks terrible. Don't but I didn't get my 10 seconds of uh, Watch Dogs. No, you don't get Oh, seconds. there you go. You got your 10 seconds up now. <laughs> um, I'll mute, mute you. Yeah, you're muted. Here we go. Music yeah. time, not from Watch Dogs. We'll pick music from... Watch Hogs. <laughs> Why don't we pick some music from, Alan? I don't know. Old as game. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. Yeah.
And welcome back from that all. Alrighty, so we're going to talk finally about some indie stuff because the actual show that we're all here for, Devolver. Yeah, that's some, yeah. yeah, they're amazing. Their shows are works of art in themselves. They're performative art. It's genuinely I, fantastic. I honestly, I honestly cannot remember a single game they actually talk about in those shows, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the shows. <laughs> that's yeah. the main thing. Yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, and then Devolver comes around and releases something. And of course I pay attention because Devolver's great and... They have that every single spirit. one of their games is either Hotline Miami or a version of Hotline Miami, which I happen to <laughs> like, <laughs> which I don't I, like. I'm oh. still waiting. I'm still waiting on um, Devolver to announce that partnership with Goichi Suda. It's happening. It's happening at some stage. Um, sure, if they they're going to make it. Well. They are definitely going to make a game together. I just don't know when it's going to announce. Maybe this year. There you go. There's my big E3 prediction. Goichi Suda is going to get up on stage and say, "I'm making this game, and it's absolutely nuts." Also, shameless plug, if you would like to meet Goichi Suda and many other great guests, come to Smash. <laughs> yes, Goichi Suda's coming to Smash, and uh, hopefully I get to interview him. It'll be like the sixth time I've actually met him. So, um, All the fighters are here. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good guy. Just adding in a man in a t-shirt. <laughs> Smash I wish I wish he'd hurry up and announce a remake of Lollipop Chainsaw. That'd anyway, be, going back to like uh, Devolver, oh, Devolver, I hope that they do. You know, the last year, like not last year, but the year before, how they had that like twenty four hours of just random crap after their thirty minute um, thing. I hope they do that. Remember that year? I was just sitting, and it was like six p.m. by that point, and the conference was like eleven a.m. And I was like, like putting stuff in the Slack, going, "Oh, they've done this," and you were just like, "What? It's still going." I want that to happen again. I just want like general confusion. I think but, that Devolver is best when it's just being confusing. Yeah, and I love it. They, they're definitely going to do something odd and different, and that'll be great. Yeah, well, it's the tenth anniversary too, so they got to make it. They How many also... years? Ten years, I think. Ten years. Wow, they've been around a while. Yeah, um, they also last year had a bit where, <laughs> like, they killed someone on stage, I think, <laughs> and then like there was fake blood everywhere. And I really respect that. And they also, the fact that they spent all their money not on the boots or anything, but on like a parking lot where they also had a shit ton of beer that anyone could drink. I think that's fantastic. Like, yeah, that's my sort of conference. Yeah, it's Take very, um, beer. they're very, uh, they're very, what, gonzo style games, game publishing, isn't it? It's very, yeah. great. it's great. I love them. I, I think they're great. I think they're good for the indie space. I think the stuff they produce is really good. As yeah. I sit here looking at my name is Pedro and thinking this oh. game looks fucking amazing right now. Um, they could come out with a deodorant and Alan, Alan would love it. Oh no, I'd yeah, play exactly. it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I would use it, yeah. <laughs> you play it. You don't play with that. Alan, no, you don't play with deodorant. Play. Just, <laughs> you spray it on yourself. It's not a game. No, also, I'm gonna take it more seriously. Of, I'm gonna rub my copy of all over of my chest while I'm naked. <laughs> Let's talk about um, <laughs> one game they're gonna announce, which is absolutely prescient political commentary, and that is Metal Wolf Chaos DS. Oh, oh yeah. yo! And it's a game where you play as the president of the United States, and you pilot a giant mech, and you blow things up. And it yeah. really reflects our political times right now. I think, even though the game came out in 2004, right now is the best time to experience it. It's a good game. It's a very good game. It's made by From Software. It is also made by the strangest developer in the history of mankind. Was that Miyazaki yeah. game as well? No, what? no, he, he didn't work on that side of things. Um, I hope that he, I want his like list of games he's worked on to be Metal Wolf Chaos and then just Dark Souls. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure he's with the um the uh, Kingsfield team. Before, yeah, I think that um, before becoming the producer. The mech side of From Software is now working on Damon X Machina. So um, that looks looking forward to. That's good. Yeah, no, I mean, all of chaos. It, it also has a banging soundtrack. So, I mean, to go back to E3, another indie side of things, I guess. I, I Did I see right? Limited Run Games is actually holding a show this year. Possible. I, I think, think I, 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 I saw a thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're actually holding a show, which is interesting because that's um that's an interesting little publisher, that one. Um, hmm. So for people who don't know what Limited Run Games is, basically it, the name's actually pretty self-explanatory. They <laughs> they find they find indie games and then uh, produce very small numbers of physical copies of those games. Hmm. I think it's what like a thousand units or something. So you have to be quick if you want to buy one. But they find they find games that nobody else would 
create a physical version of and they're for people who don't particularly want to buy the digital versions of those games i and... have some information on it limited run games will announce almost 50 games during that press conference and that's why they're an interesting publisher because that's basically what they have to do to stay in business because they run so few uh units per yeah. per game title so yeah i'd be interested to see what they've got um and hopefully there's some interesting stuff in there yeah it'd be good i'm excited i think honestly i respect what they do quite a lot because like having that physical aspect to a game can be almost like more um supportive to a game developer because it's like this is a physical thing and it i don't know it would make me if i was a game developer if i had a physical cartridge in front of me i would feel much better about my project just because like it's physical it's real like that's yeah, there's a certain I mean, vanity, yeah. vanity kind of thing, isn't it? But um, it, it is a good thing for the developers. It helps get them some presence, you know, with people yeah. who don't, don't buy digital because there are people that still refuse to. Um, we call them dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, they I'm, don't need game of fuel. I, I'm pretty sure they don't listen too much to digitallydownloaded.net, given what. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we slide them off now. Then <laughs> have, have you been to our sister site, physicallypurchased.net? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not um, just games. <laughs> that, that is, that is indeed. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. For me, I think E3, if E3 is going to be an interesting one, it will be the indies because obviously Sony's not there. Not that I'm particularly interested in anything that Sony has coming up anyway. Um, on to Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima. Um, yeah, what was that tone that you just had. It sounded like you know Ushiwaka from Okami. <laughs> like he's like, oh, he's like that. This is great. Yeah. Also, um, Okami's really good. I hope that they announce like me too. Yeah, that would be good. No, but it'll be the indies that'll be <laughs> interesting for me um, because Microsoft doesn't really do anything for me ever. Um, and Nintendo's great. I, I do like Nintendo, and I'm sure they'll have a good show with a direct. But they're not really part of E3 as much. You know, yeah. these days, it's more about the digital show. So, yeah, if anything comes out of E3, it'll be that indie stuff. And I hope it's good. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of indies out there. But I'm, I'm just hoping that, firstly, indies have moved on from roguelikes. And secondly, they've moved on from metroidvanias. I've had enough of those two genres. It's time for indies to Ooh, explore actually, other worlds. On the topic of that, um, Hollow Knight 2. Ooh. Um, that's, that's happening. They might bring that to E3. If they do, I'll be there. And I'll be waiting for it because it's great. Also, Hollow Knight, very Australian game. It's all made in Adelaide. Heck yeah. Really? Yeah. No, I, mean, I mean, I knew it was an, a, an Aussie game. I didn't realize yeah. that um, it's actually going to be there. Do you know what would yeah. be great? If Untitled Goose Game is there. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Oh, it's a honk game. Yeah. <laughs> I like the honk game. Who's publishing that again? Uh, it's like the Australian... It's self-published. It's self yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, because it's part of the Australian Games Fund development. But um, I think Nintendo's pretty invested in it because they keep promoting it in all their indie things. So because it's hilarious. And it's also, it's family-friendly goose fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if anything, uh, I've always aspired to be a, a goose that's a bit of a shit to people. And um, <laughs> this game... This I game aspired be... to be a different animal. <laughs> Matt's <a> very concerned. <laughs> and this game will be my opportunity to live vicariously through the goose. Um, the goose is Matt's spirit's animal. It really is. That goose is such a shit. He's great. I was like anything. Like Matt and Fowl have a connection today. Farfetch, <laughs> goose. Yeah, I like my duckies. Yeah. Um, I have a connection to a blob of cum. I, I still. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still hope. I, I still reckon the best thing for Untitled Goose Game will be like a DLC level where you can get into Randy Pritchford's office and just trash the place. Oh, yeah, the place. Three's going to be at E3. Yeah, but we don't care about what. I wonder how much magic show we're going to see. <laughs> I want to see the magic, Matt. I want to see it. 2K is not actually running a, a show, though, are they? They're just going to be no. like, yeah. Mm. And then oh, also, we haven't... I mean, one thing we haven't talked about is Square Enix. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're going to be there. In well, Fun Fantasy Remake. Remake. Yeah, Fun Fantasy Remake. It's still happening, guys. Please believe us. Oh, God. <laughs> no, actually... they're actually doing a floor show, so they've got to have stuff to show. Um, they are it'll be quite the on track with it. It's just like a model of the cloud. <laughs> It's the no, single no. model of cloud that they can rotate and be like, with your hair. <laughs> it floats in the wind. No, they'll announce a fixed Ares to... Yeah, because Kratos killed her. <laughs> no, fix, fix the character model so that now all the nerds are happy. It's probably Ares. too early for Octopath uh, 2. 
It is pretty early. Oh, that, that game should not get a game as well. It's already getting a sequel. It was announced. Well, not really announced, but it was like in an interview, like after the release of the original one, it was like, oh yeah, we're working on a sequel, blah, blah, blah. That's a yeah, but that's mobile. make one. like a new, a new, new game. They should like Lost Sphere to the Iron Setsuno. They shouldn't make... Oh, oh they might show the new one from Tokyo RPG. Uh, yeah. Speaking of Lost Sphere, the action one. probably would. Mm. Oni, Oni Naki, is that what it's called? Something like that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Because that looks very, um, I don't know, secret and mannery. Yeah. But done Do right. You think oh, Tokyo Game Show at though, or will they E3? It? They'll probably uh, nobody it nobody does Tokyo Game Show anymore. Like not in the sense that they don't announce stuff there. It's not really oh. huh. it's not really a show for announcements. I mean E3 is and then Gamescom. So it'll be one of those two. We will see the Avengers for the first time though. We will. I am keen on seeing what Square Enix does with that. If um, it's like a Left 4 Dead style game, that's like what I want. No, I want it to be like a turn-based RPG. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's <laughs> Final Fantasy yeah. Tactics, but actually, that'd be cool. I'd play a tactics RPG. Oh, that'd be so cool. You know, uh, it'd be cool if it was actually like Pokemon Go, but like Avengers. No, you don't want to catch no. Iron Man's dick. <laughs> <laughs> Why that part of him? Why not the whole Iron Man? <laughs> no, because it's like Exodia. You have to collect all his body parts to build him. <laughs> Uh, do you, should we, you reckon, should we leave it there? Well, just one other thing. Do you reckon we'll get a, a hint about what Yoko Taro is working on next? No. No, he'll rock up and he'll be like, Hi, I'm Yoko Taro. He's, he's, he's working, working on Final Fantasy fourteen. He is working on Final Fantasy fourteen. No, he's doing one little thing there. He's not like... No, but he's rebuilding the game, Matt. It's the <laughs> new Realm Reborn. <laughs> the Realm Final Reborn Fantasy fourteen three. Um Near Automata. <laughs> no, I reckon we might... I, there's a there's an outside chance they'll tease what he's working on, whether that be near Automata or near near three or Draken Guard four or or no, near no. near remake. What about near far wherever you are? <laughs> or yeah, near far. Or it'll be it'll be <laughs> Yoko, that's Yoko that's Taro. Yoko will get up on stage and be like, "Yeah, so I'm actually on Death Stranding and I've taken it over from Kojima and I'm fixing it." And that's that's his whole announcement. We also forgot to talk about Death Stranding, but do we actually want to? No, we talked about it last week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we we weren't very this positive. The podcast, Harvard. <laughs> All right, should we leave it there? Yeah, on that, that note. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's, let's end this nightmare. Yeah, let's see how obviously E three goes. Um, we'll be back next week to talk about, I guess, what happened, how right we were with our predictions, and whether we still care about Pokemon at the end of it. I do. Um, what? I do. You do? Yeah. You just care about Mook. Um, okay, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll have some music from Nia to finish up this week.
I want to make a version of Wash Dogs called Wash Hogs. Where you, <laughs> where you clean things. <laughs> no, no, X, Xbox is going to get up on stage and say that they've got like a, an exclusive DLC bonus or something for Watch Dogs, which is called Wash Dogs. And you have to use the Microsoft cleaning products in the city and uh, run around spraying people with deodorant. See, again, like smell like a gamer. <laughs> Rise up. Apparently, apparently it's really nice. Apparently it's got a lime scent to it or something. See, my issue is you shouldn't be <laughs> fucking relying on a fucking game company to clean your fucking body. You know, okay, no. If you take a shit, if you go to the bathroom and take a shit, you don't be like, oh, no, I'm a gamer. I don't need to wash my hands. Wiping, that's what nerds do. I'm a gamer. I don't but, need a flush. I'm a man. <laughs> deodorant is not a lucid concept. You can fucking go to you go to a store and you buy David Beckham classic and you hold it and you, you spray it on your body. It's a fucking two step process. I am so annoyed with people who cannot fucking clean themselves. God damn it! <laughs> so that yeah. should be that should be in the outtakes of the podcast at the end. <laughs> Alan Alan loses it completely. Alan, <laughs> Alan's not allowed anymore. Should make it the intro song. Like the intro that's, to every that's podcast. That's the intro. The, the, the intro is just uh, Alan, Alan flipping out of it. Clean, cleanliest products. I like that. Especially, it sounds like you took a step back from the mic so you could yell louder. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I have no audio edit this shit, but I understand the pain of peaking audio.